In this video, we finish up our introduction to participles with part three of three, where we're gonna sort of put it all together. We're gonna to put both the grammar and the syntax together with the forms of the participles um, and do a little bit of practice with both of those at the same time. So that, uh, previously we sort of focused on one or the other, and now we're gonna put it all together. So we're gonna start our uh, putting it all together by having you put it all together with this quick quiz. And just, uh, just as with the other quick quizzes, I have strongly encouraged you that doing these uh, and answering these well might behoove you for your future. So go ahead and pause. Uh, answer these questions on your whiteboard, one through six. I'm gonna go ahead and pause and do the same thing while you do that. All right, so here we are. We have a, a review of both syntax and a little bit of forms down here at the bottom. So uh, as to parts of speech of uh, participles or what they take their parts from, verbs and adjectives, they are verbal adjectives. The man who was saying is an attributive adjective uh, sorry, an attributed participle, uh, modifying the noun, the man. So in Greek, we would have this as a definite article with the word for man on air, and then a definite article with the participle for was saying, uh, legon in this case. The one saying would be, uh, it's a substantival participle, and it would just be ha legon, uh, ha let go, the one saying, no other noun being modified there. And then while saying these things, the person sat would be an adver adverbial participle would just be let go. There would be no definite article before it because adverbial participles don't have a, uh, an uh, article before them. This one's gonna be attributive with the participle having the uh, article right before it, modifying a noun. This one's substantive where the Participle functions as the object or the subject of the verb. And then this one is adverbial right here, uh, telling us the circumstances under which the speaking happens. So believing the man speaks. And then akousas is going to be our aorist. We see that with the sa in there. And then the sasia essontias, the third declension, uh, that sigma in there, telling us nominative, masculine, singular. And notice this is aorist, but it does not have an augment. That is because, as we've said several times now, that's right, participles don't take augments. The augment only occurs in the... Indicative mood, nailed it. And then leganta is gonna be present, uh, that we have the this uh, aunt here indicating the present as well as the fact that we don't have a changed stem there. All right, so to the Greek syntax of participles. This is returning back to some things we talked about in the first video, and we're gonna pick them back up here by way of just a little bit of review because hearing things and seeing things more than once helps us learn it better. So an attributive participle is gonna modify a noun that it matches in case, gender, number. We're usually gonna translate it uh, with a relative clause. It's gonna have the article before it and then the noun with it as well. We have two examples here, the believing man or the man, or the, man the one uh, who is believing basically meaning the same thing, a slight shade of nuance. And then as a reminder, the participle can take things after it as well uh, before it goes with its noun. So the believing in the Lord man. So on air matches pistuon. Uh, on air is a third declension, nominative masculine singular, as is pistuon, nominative masculine singular. But this prepositional phrase has been stuck in to modify the participle. So things can modify the participle before the noun comes. A substantival participle, we're gonna usually translate with something like the ones. The article is gonna precede the participle and there's gonna be no other noun that is modified. And then an adverbial participle is going to stand on its own uh, without an article before it. So going down to the sea, katabainon prostain thalasan, uh, the going down is happening at the same time as the man was carrying a boat. So remember, you carry a boat like this down to the sea. Um, this adverbial participle is telling us uh, the, so this whole phrase we would call a participial phrase right here, is telling us the circumstances under which the 
the action of the verb happened. So uh, care, while uh, going down to the sea, the man was carrying a boat. Or just going down to the sea, the man was carrying a boat. Uh, so we're going to do another little, uh, another pause here, another quick quiz where I ask you to practice identifying whether a participle is attributive, substantival, or adverbial based on that review we just did and based on uh, what each one of these is going to look like specifically with respect to uh, an article and a, another noun in the sentence. So go ahead and pause the lecture. Uh, just write one to seven and then write if it's attributive, substantival, or adverbial. All right, for doing that work there, let's high five, one, two, three, boom. And what we have is attributive, adverbial, substantival, attributive, substantival, substantival, adverbial. Let's walk through them really, really quickly here. So we have the apostle, the one speaking. So we have the article with a participle, modifying the apostle, making it attributive. Here we have a poem is our participle with no article before it, not modifying anything else, uh, saying these things, the apostle sees the slave. So, uh, uh, or saying these things. I can't remember if I said saying or seeing there. Saying these things, the apostle sees the slave. Uh, this tells us, this adverbial participial phrase, tells us the circumstances under which the action of the verb happened. Uh, and notice this is, I should say also, that this is an, uh, an aorist participle. So this action happened and then this, uh, this, action, this action was completed and then the action of the verb happened. So I, this actually should probably be translated, uh, after saying these things, the apostle saw the slave. Uh, halog legon, no other noun there. We have the article. Uh, article before the participle, so we have a substantival. Uh, the one saying these things knows the Lord. Here we have uh, ton leganta, modifying ton apostolon, matching it in case, gender, and number. Even though this ending here looks different, these are both accusative masculine uh, singular. This one taking third declension endings as a participle, and this one a noun taking second declension endings. So it's an attributive, uh, an attributive participle, meaning we, the sentence means we see the apostle uh, who is saying these things. And then here we have a, a very similar thing, but just with the apostle taken out, which makes this substantive. We see the one saying these things. And then here another substantive, the one sending, the subject of the sentence and the participle. So notice a substantival participle can be in a number of different cases, or any case I should say. Here it's in the accusative because it's the object of the verb. So if we were to mark our sentence, we might do it like this. This time it's the subject of the verb, esten, and so it's uh, in the nominative case. It's the one sending, and then it's taking an accusative object, the one sending the apostles. So the the apostles here is in the accusative as the object of the preposition or of the uh, participle. The participle can take an object because it's part verb. It can take an object. Uh, the one sending the apostles is righteous. So here we have another nominative, and the to be verb is functioning sort of like an equal sign. The one sending the apostles equals righteous. And then here we have another adverbial participle, no article before it. Uh, hearing these things, or better having heard these things, this action is completed. The apostle preached the gospel. So, uh, so having heard these things or after hearing these things, the action of hearing the things is completed. And then the apostle preached the gospel in past time. So we get the past time from the indicative verb, A.K. Rook said, uh, and we get the, the, that the, this action came before this action based on the tense of the participle. So that if this was in the present tense, uh, hearing these things would happen at the same time as preaching. So while hearing these things, the apostle preached the gospel. That would be if this was in the present tense, we would do while hearing these things rather than having heard or after hearing these things. 
All right, let's talk about tenses of participles one more time. Remember in that first video, I, uh, I put that little, uh, little bit in your brain that I said we're going to come back to. Here we are coming back to it uh, with what I just, we just reviewed a little bit there in that last, um, that last item on the quick quiz, is that uh, the tense of a participle doesn't tell us when the action of the verb took place. It tells us uh, how the, um, the action of the participle relates to the action of the verb. So the present tense participle, the action of the participle is happening at the same time the action of the verb does, whether that's in the past tense with the aorist indicative of the verb, or whether that's in the present tense with the present indicative of the verb, or whether that's in the future tense with the future indicative of the verb. With an aorist tense participle, the action is completed, the action happens, and then the action of the verb happens. So uh, an example here is lusos ton anthropon, uh, after he released the man, that action was completed, it was done, the Lord spoke. So before the Lord spoke, he released the man. That's why we do after here, uh, and we actually put this participle into an indicative phrase, after he released. Uh, and, and even also after releasing would work as, as well, uh, but after he released really gets the sense that this happened and was done, and then this happened. And then lastly, with the perfect tense, the, uh, the action of the participle has been completed in the past, but the action of the participle still has results when the verb happens. So, le lucas, having released ton anthropon, le lucas ton anthropon, having released the man. So, in the past, the man was released. He still released when the Lord spoke in past time. So, having released the man, the master or Lord spoke. And so what I want you to do here is uh, practice with participle tenses. So state uh, whether the action of the verb happens at the, uh, at the same time, whether it's contemporaneous with or simultaneous to the, uh, the action of the main verb, and that would be with present tense participles, or whether the action is completed with an aorist tense participle uh, and so we're, what we're doing here, what I'm asking you to do here is just uh, figure out how the action of the participle relates to the verb. Go ahead and pause and I will uh, do the same. All right, whether or not this is what you got, and I'll explain what my chicken scratch here means. Let's high five for your work. One, two, three, boom. Good job. Proud of you. What we have is completed action. The action of the participle is completed before the action of the verb in the case of one, two, and five. That is, these are going to be aorist participles. The first two are second aorist participles, and the last one is a first aorist participle. What I want to do is really quickly walk through each of these sentences uh, because having the sentences be very similar to one another, I think helps us understand this concept of the action of the participle relating to the time of the verb. So we have an aorist participle, which is going to tell us that that action was done before the action of the verb. So having said these things, the apostle sees the slave. So the apostle sees the slave in present time, uh, but before he sees the slave in present time, he said or he spoke these things. In this case, the sentence is almost exactly the same, except for our indicative verb is in the aorist as well. So uh, the apostle saw the slave. So having seen these things, the apostle saw the slave. So the action of the participle is even one step further back in the past than is this. So this action, the say, uh, saying these things or happened, and then still in past time, the apostle saw the slave. And here we move it into the present. Saying these things, the apostle sees the slave. Um, so we probably want to even do this while saying these things. The apostle sees the slave. The action of saying and seeing happens at the same time, not because the indicative verb is in the present tense. This tells us that this action happens in present time, but the action of the participle happens at the same time as the action of 
the verb because it's in the present tense. So seeing, uh, saying these things, the apostle sees the slave. And here we get uh, a, a new sentence, one with uh, both of them, I'm sorry, with a uh, imperfect active indicative um, third person plural verb uh, from Keruso. Uh, preach. So uh, they were preaching, and the ones that are preaching are the apostles in both cases, hoi apostoloi. Uh, and what they're preaching is the gospel, ton euangelion. And the participle here is going to tell us more information about the act, this action here. So these are all adverbial participles. Uh, this one is going to be in the present tense, indicating that the action of coming happens at the same time as the preaching. So the apostles were preaching the gospels sort of as they were walking. So walking, the apostles were preaching the gospel. This one with that saw in there tells us we have a first aorist. So that action is going to be completed and then this action is going to happen. So having walked or after having walked or after walking, that action is completed first. The apostles were preaching the gospel. So we still want to do this in past time, continuous action, because it's the imperfect tense. Um, so this phrase is going to be exactly the same as to time in both of these. But the walking, the nature of the walking, and this one happens at the same time as the preaching, whereas this one, the walking is done when the preaching starts. So let's move to some uh, translating adverbial participles. And we're not going to have a lecture pause for this one. This is to give you more information, specifically looking sort of forward to the Greek exegesis class. One of the beautiful things about participles and one of the very frustrating things about participles is that they are so malleable and so flexible and they can mean so many different things. So uh, at their basic level, an adverbial participle, as we've said many times now, uh, is related to the action of the main verb and tells us the circumstances under which the uh, main verb happened. But the action of the participle can relate to the action of the verb in different ways. That's true not only with respect to whether it's completed or whether it's ongoing or simultaneous with, but also sort of uh, the type of uh, action or the type of relationship, whether it be a, a relationship of time, whether it be a relationship of manner, whether it be a relationship of cause, or whether it be a relationship of condition. And these are just a limited sampling of how the participle can relate to the action of the main verb. So we can have something like, uh, while walking, the apostles were preaching the gospel. Uh, or after having walked, telling us more about time, or um, by walking, or uh, by, uh, if this is, doesn't really make sense in English, but uh, by walking, the apostles were proclaiming the gospels, or maybe by living the gospels, uh, the apostles were proclaiming the gospel, that the, the participle by living tells us the manner or means in which the action of the main verb they were preaching uh, came about. Or uh, because, uh, because they died, that could be a participial phrase, uh, the apostles were proclaiming the, uh, the gospel that the, the, uh, the action of the participle explains why the action of the verb happened, that we have a causal participle. And then also, uh, if maybe something like, if they walk, uh, the disciples will proclaim the, the gospel. So there's the, all this to say there's a number of different ways that the participle relates to the action of the verb and there's nothing about the participle itself that's going to indicate one of these or the other. Uh, the participle will indicate whether the action is contemporaneous with the verb, as in a present participle, or completed before the action of the verb, as with an aorist participle, but it won't indicate anything about its sort of relationship to the verb based on just the participle itself. That comes through context alone, and that's uh, usually an interpretive decision that you have to make.
And the very last thing on participles here is, uh, is an important category of participial phrases. So a participial phrase is when we have a participle with a noun. Um, so we have uh, what's called a genitive absolute is a particular kind of participle, uh, participial phrase. And this is when the, uh, the subject of the participle is different from the subject of the indicative verb. So in all the examples we've seen so far, the participle and the, uh, the subject of the verb match one another. The, the, the one doing the stuff of the participle is also the one doing the stuff of the verb. If there's a mismatch there, if someone else is doing the stuff of the participle and another person, another subject is doing the stuff of the verb, then the participle will be in the genitive case and any subject that it has will also be in the genitive case. And this is called the genitive absolute because absolute means independent. Uh, it's the genitive independent participial clause uh, that we have a participial clause in the genitive and then another clause in the indicative that has a different subject to it. Um, so as I just uh, said out loud but didn't have up here on the screen, uh, for a genitive absolute, the participle and noun, uh, if there is a noun, uh, sometimes there won't be a noun, the subject can be implied in the participle itself, are going to both be in the genitive. But you can also have a genitive absolute only with a participle. So uh, if there's a noun, it'll be in the genitive, and there will always be a participle in the genitive absolute, and it will always be in the genitive. Uh, and usually a genitive absolute is gonna occur at the beginning of a sentence. So the sentence will start with a genitive absolute and then move on to an indicative uh, phrase. So what I'm gonna do here is give you an example first of what a genitive absolute is not, or a participial phrase that is not a genitive absolute, uh, by way to contrast one that is a genitive absolute next. So actually two examples. Lusos ton anthropon ha kurios apen. So this whole thing here is our participial phrase, releasing the man the Lord spoke. So notice this is a uh, aorist participle, so we might want to do and that's what I do over here, after he released the man. So that action happened first, the Lord spoke. So this, notice that lusos matches hakurios. Both of these are nominative masculine singulars. The, the one doing the action of the participle, the loosing, is the same one who's doing the action of the verb, namely the Lord. So these match one another, and so it's not forced into uh, a genitive absolute. The same, oh, so I tell you this, uh, this is an explanation, not a further example. Lusos modifies and goes with Lord, and it matches Lord. And so it's not a genitive absolute. Here is one uh, that is a genitive absolute. Lusantos, so this is a, uh, notice this os ending, osia. So this is the third declension uh, masculine genitive singular ending. So this is a, a aorist active participle, genitive masculine singular. And then notice right after it, we have another genitive uh, masculine singular, to kuryu. Um, so all of this stuff is gonna be independent of the actual main verb and subject in the sentence. So the main verb and the main subject is the prophet spoke. And this stuff is all separate from it with a different subject. So the subject of our participle is going to be to kuryu in the genitive case. So the Lord, or when the Lord released, because this action happened or was completed before this action happened, when the Lord released, ton anthropon, the human, the prophet spoke. So notice that there is a, a different subject, different uh, subject doing the action of this participle than is doing the action of this verb. And that's what forces this into the genitive absolute at the beginning of the sentence as we often expect it to.